Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, um, I uploaded a video a little earlier today, but <clears throat> it didn't necessarily have the right information and someone pulled, called me out on that. So, I've taken that video down since, redone this entire guide, uh, at least this uh, build diary, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get back on track. So, what do we got here? We have a Soul Rest Phantasm Summoner, which is a little bizarre, but basically works like this. You Cyclone, you pop Desecrate, you summon Phantasms using your Offering skill. In this case, we're using, uh, I think it was, which Offering? Flesh Offering, so that increases speed. So, then we have about 21 minions. So, pretty much the, I, I guess that's the base mechanic, but there's a little bit more to this. So basically, Phantasm summoning only works because of this particular staff called the Soul Rest Ezemite Staff. What it basically does is it has trigger level 20 Phantasm skill when you consume a corpse. Now, you don't need to link this staff up, but basically you're going to be running Elemental Focus, Predator, Summon Phantasm obviously, Minion Damage, Controlled Destruction, and in this case I run lesser projectiles. You can run slower projectiles, but I found lesser projectiles being much better for mapping. That's just part of this. So the next part is, and you can see I've got a crap chest piece. In your chest piece, you're going to run Flesh Offering. You're going to run Desecrate. You're going to run Infused Channeling. You're going to run Cyclone. And you're going to run Cast While Channeling. So when you cast and channel, you're, you're popping Desecrate as your Cyclone goes off. And then at the same time, you're uh, summoning your phantasms because your offerings popping because you can uh, your offerings popping because you're consuming corpses, and then the consuming corpses then feeds into the staff and does what it's supposed to do, which is summon phantasms. Now, as far as gearing goes, you will need the soul rest staff. Um, you will need a six link chest, or you could do this with a four link. It's not going to be as good from a um, layered defense perspective, and we'll talk about that soon, but it's gonna be okay. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need are triad grips, which uh, you specifically need to have three green sockets and one blue socket, and the reason why is we're converting the, um, the physical damage that minions output to cold damage, because we wanna ideally focus on cold damage, uh, the other thing you'll need is a Darkness and Throne, and the reason why, and this is a pretty standard Necromancer item, is because you can run two Ghastly Eyes, and it's going to give you 75% increased effect of those jewels. So ideally you want to run minions do um, increased damage um, if you've used a minion skill recently, because we're always going to be using Summon Phantasm when we Cyclone. You also want to get Cold Damage, and you want to get Life. Um, and you basically want to double down on those. So that's pretty much the key one there. Now, helm-wise, you're going to be running a Devouring Ditem. And the reason why is this gives you Feast of Flesh, which restores your health, 20% um, mana reduction, which uh, reserved mana, mana reduction, which is going to mean we can run three aura skills. Um, and it's also going to give you Eldritch Battery, which converts your energy shield to your mana pool. And this means that you can completely use your entire mana pool and be able to cast using your energy shield that sits over your mana as you can see there which generates incredibly quickly which is fantastic so this is a key item now out of this entire build this is the most expensive item about 120 chaos right now it's not too bad triad grips one chaos soul rest five chaos uh three chaos for the darkness and throne and then basically everything else is pretty kosher. So necklace, you're going to be using the Jinx Juju and you're going to be using an Anoint with uh, Ravenous Horde. And the reason why is you're going to be redirecting 10% of the damage that you take to your Spectres. Um, so you get damage reduction from using Infused Channeling. And we'll talk about Fortify soon. And you're going to get 10% de uh, damage taken from hits to you to your Spectres. And your Spectres, which you're going to run Carnage Chiefs... Um, and oh, what was the other one? I can't remember the other one. This power charge one. Basically, you're going to be running Carnage Chieftains. Um, and the reason why is Carnage Chieftains generate frenzy charges, which speeds you up and it speeds your minions up as well. So, the Jinx Juju is actually one of the key items in this build. Now, for a boots from the boots perspective, you don't really need anything special or resist life. 
I will eventually get um, uh, Flight of the Avian um, and then I basically run that aura from the boots and I'll drop off one of the auras on my helm but for now I'm not going to do that uh, and then you'll have your six, uh, six socket chest piece that's pretty much all there is for gearing it's quite straightforward so the most expensive item is the devouring diadem you don't necessarily need it to start with but you'll only be able to run two auras instead of three with that now gem setups um, so main setup for summon phantasms is obviously your summon phantasms minion damage predator so you can target uh, elemental focus control destruction lesser multiple projectiles as you were seeing in the b-roll does really good clear speed uh, your helm you're going to be running zealotry hatred summon skitterbots and uh, generosity so you can further buff your minions up so they do way more damage in your chest you're going to be running flesh offering uh, in my case i run life gain on hit and that's and um, we'll get to that reason why um desecrate uh infuse channeling cyclone and cast while channel support so you can channel everything now the rings I've got, I'm actually using unset rings, and that is actually a thing in this build because we need to fit flame dash and convocation in somewhere, and we don't have enough gem setups. You'll also note that if you're looking at the POV, there's no cast wind damage taken. This can do Cyrus deathless without cast with damage taken, which is unbelievable that the amount of damage reduction that this build actually gives you. Um, you don't need a, a guard skill, which is fantastic. Uh, if, you, if you could fit one in, bloody hell, you'd be unkillable to the max. This still dies from time to time, but I'm having no issues with T16 maps and everything with this. So, in your, uh, in your um, gloves, you're going to be running Summon Ice Golem, because we want that crit and accuracy. Uh, Culling Strike, so you proc Culling Strike with your Ice Golem. Uh, you're going to be running Sniper's Mark, that's just to fit that into the gloves because uh, you're going to tag Signal Prey and Sniper's Mark on enemies when you come near them. Uh, so I've got that mapped to my Q and W. And then Feeding Frenzy Support because the Ice Golem is going to have a higher chance of survivability than any other minion and it's relatively easy to resummon, unlike Spectres and the Animate Guardian that we're going to be using. So, in our boots, we're going to be re using Ray Spectre. We're also going to be using a Minion Life Gem. Basically, want these guys to get up to close to 100, as close to 100k as you can. The biggie, which is fantastic in this build, is the Animate Guardian. And basically, we're buffing the Animate Guardian, and I'll put each one of these images on um, on the screen. Uh, with a uh, Leer Cast Helm, which gives your you and your nearby enemies 15% increased damage. In this case, we're running a Kingmaker on my Animate Guardian because it's going to give your enemies Culling Strike, increased Critical uh, Damage Multiplier, and it's also going to give you increased Rarity. And all, as you can see, I don't need to run Fortify in my setup because the Kingmaker gives me Fortify off the bat. Now, once you cast this and you pick it up with your Animate Guardian, that's it. You're going to lose 50 Chaos and you're going to have to go buy another Kingmaker if you want another one. But that's entirely up to you. That's the investment you make. If I decouple these boots, I'm not entirely sure if the Animate Guardian will be permanently gone and I'll need to buy another 50 Chaos Kingmaker. But the Leer Cast is relatively cheap. The other thing that you'll notice is I have Victario's Flight. That's also because my Animate Guardian has given me Victario's Flight, which increases your uh, movement speed as well. Uh, and damage taken, uh, well, that only applies to the, um, to the minion. So you get an increased 10% movement speed. Uh, in the case of this one too, I'm also running an Ambu's Charge just for the survivability of my, um, my Animate Guardian because you really don't want that bastard dying. Um, and if you can't afford a Kingmaker, Dying Breath is fine. And uh, I'll put an image of that up on the screen. Basically, it's going to give you and your allies 18% increased damage, uh, increased um, area of effect of aura skills and increased area, uh, effect of your auras as well so it's a really good um, basically aura buffing uh, skill now basically what this means is that your uh, animate guardian is a little aura bot um, that follows you around which is friggin dope in this build but yeah that's pretty much it for gearing uh, you'll see it in the POB this isn't the comprehensive guide but I'll go into that at a later date when I fully fleshed it out now from a, uh, from a gearing perspective, relatively straightforward. No watcher's eyes or anything like that required in this build. Uh, pretty much you're gonna start building um, up and you're gonna skip these nodes in here. You'll go to the left. 
uh, and you're going to move up and pick up cruel preparation now i will eventually pick up this uh, basic socket so i can put another ghastly iron but right now i don't have that uh, then you'll come to the left you want to get enduring bond uh, ignore quick recovery because if you look down here we are running a fortress covenant which buffs our minions up by 38 percent dps if we run a keystone in this radius, it will mean our minions take 20% more damage and we definitely don't want that to happen. Uh, then we'll come down and we'll run Elemental Equilibrium. And interestingly enough, uh, I'll explain why we run that very shortly. So then we'll come up, we'll pick up this jewel socket here because we'll get cluster jewels and I'll talk about this after. Um, then you will want to come to the left and get Death Attunement. You'll come across and get Avatar of Fire. Now, the reason why you want to run Avatar of Fire is basically we're converting all our damage to cold damage, but at the same time, we're also reconverting that to fire damage. So when the fire damage procs, it's actually going to um, proc elemental equilibrium, which is going to give a buff to the fire damage, but then the cold damage is going to kick in, um, as in give a buff to the resistance of enemies against fire damage, but then they're going to have negative 50% resistance to the cold damage that we output, and that's basically... How we're going to get around that uh, so then you'll come down you'll pick up purity of flesh sovereignty because uh, auras and mana reservation reduction uh, then you want to get righteous army redemption and these devotion and life notes here you'll also pick up this jewel socket at a later date as well so then if we come back to <clears throat> where we started at our intersecting point here we'll come down pick up sacrifice spiritual command Retribution, Discipline and Training, and you'll move down, pick up Grave Pact, all the way down to Warrior's Blood, and then you'll go to the left and you'll finish off by picking up the uh, Life Cluster down here. Now, Cluster Jewels. Right now I've got Call to Slaughter and Renewal. Um, I would like to get, um, you know, something else, anything else in there um, as a third, but for now that's good enough. Um, the other thing you'll need is Life from Death, and you'll need Blessed Rebirth. And if you can get that in the same cluster, best case scenario, and then essentially you can flesh it out with anything else. You can either choose to buff minions further, or you can go crazy with whatever else you want to put in there if you want Chaos Resist, because technically you could probably run Divine Flesh on this as well. Um, then for small clusters, you're going to run Feast of Flesh. This means every time you cyclone around, you're going to get 10 life gain for each enemy hit, plus 8% maximum life. And I'm also running Surging Vitality to give me that 10% life regenerated every 4 seconds. Now on top of that, I've also got a life on hit gem in my setup, which I get 36 life on hit. Which means basically as I'm mapping, I've got stupid amounts of damage reduction. I've got Fortify from my Animate Guardian. I've got damage reduction from my Jinx Juju that mitigates it to my minions. And then on top of that, I've got Infused Channeling as well. Um, and then the next part is our Ascendancy. So we'll get Commander of Darkness that's going to buff our allies again, give us increased elemental resistances. So that's going to be the first one you get. You're going to get Mindless Aggression second. You're going to get Bone Barrier, so that's our other damage layer. So you're going to get physical damage reduction per minion up to 10%. We've got like 30 minions, so we're going to get 10% damage reduction there. Increased life recovery up to 20%, so again, 20% life recovery. Um, so uh, the next thing you're going to get fourth um, in the sequence is Plaguebringer, and that means that at, if there's at least one nearby corpse, your allies are going to deal 10% more damage and nearby enemies are going to deal 10% reduced damage, which means that that's another layer of damage reduction, which is why you can do Cyrus for 4,600 health in this build. Um, it's incredibly sustainable, does T16s really easily. Um, pretty much once you QW target your enemy, your allies just absolutely flay them and destroy them. Um, now, Pantheon... Uh, the Pantheon that I'm running, simply just running Soul of Lunaris, again, damage reduction and movement speed, and Soul of Relikesh. Um, that's mainly to avoid dot and physical dot and bleeding. Uh, now you can switch that out and run Soul of Shikari, that's going to reduce uh, the chance of chaos damage over time and poison damage as well if you upgrade that. Um, but you can run that too. Now, upgrades for this build uh, so far that I've established is I sort of want to throw around the idea of running a, 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 a Sakawal's Nest. And the reason why is Aspect of the Avians. So then you can have Avians Fight, avians fight and Avians Flight. 
Now, the other thing that you can do is you can find better items to buff up your um, Animate Guardian. So for example, you could run a Grip of the Council um, and that's gonna do additional cold damage for your minions. Unfortunately, they're like three to five X this league. The other thing that you can run, I think, is the uh, Crown of something. Um, but that again is 7x, so not exactly the cheapest way to go about it. Mainly you're just going to be looking to min and max. So if I was running this uh, Sequala's Nest, then I would also want to get Aspect of the Avian crafted onto my boots and potentially Tailwind. I probably need to get better boots, in fact I do need to get better boots, but I'm a little bit scared to remove my anime guardian right now because I don't know what's going to happen to my Kingsguard. Uh, so if someone wants to post that into the comments, then please do. I haven't played a Necromancer in some time, and I never used to run Animate Guardians on them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so far, I've done Cyrus. Uh, I've been killing pretty much every boss I come against with relative ease. It's highly sustainable. It's got good clear speed. Uh, it's a fun build to play. It's very different. Gearing wise is cheap to get started, it's relatively cheap to get to T16 level with the only real investment you're going to need to make straight up being your devouring item. You can do everything else on the dirt cheap now in League and uh, yeah that's pretty much the build. Um, there will be an official build guide for this one and probably a part 2 if I get Sequala's Nest working but as an overall this is a great build um, and there's going to be a video coming up after this video of my first um, Cyrus fight of the League of which I did Deathless with this build. So it was fantastic for that. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, like and sub. And uh, until next time, bye.